Hello everyone, my name is Silver Contrail, and today I'm spotlighting Gendistry, the version 1.1.0 of the mod for Minecraft 1.64. Uh, this is a relatively new update, just came out a couple of days ago. I'm actually recording this on April 1st, so I am a testificate. Uh, that's not really relevant. Um, what we're going to talk about today, of course, is all the new stuff that's been added to Gendistry, and we'll get right into that. But first, we do want to talk about what Gendistry is if you're unfamiliar. I definitely recommend you check out my previous Mod Spotlight where I talk about all of these machines over here. Uh, basically what Gendistry is, is a mod that allows you to breed bees in a way that is much less tedious and much more intuitive than the usual way. Uh, it definitely does not take anywhere near as long and you can use your infrastructure, your power infrastructure for things like thermal expansion and industrial craft to help you out along the way uh, as well as build craft. Uh, for the requirements for this mod, you will need Forge, you're going to need Forestry, and of course Minecraft 164. Uh, this is mod is created by Bidu. You can check out his wiki. It's got a ton of great information. You can check out the form thread. I'll link both of those in the description. And of course the download. You will need to download both Gendistry and the library for Gendistry. And make sure you install those both into the mod folder of whatever pack you're using. Uh, specifically, I'm using Resonant Rise, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, but yeah, we'll get right into things. Uh, first, we want to cover a couple of the new items. And if we go over here and check on this chest, uh, we've got a couple of new things in here, some new upgrades. Uh, for one, we've got three of these emulation upgrades. And what they do is they basically trick the industrial apiary here into thinking that it's in a specific biome. Now, before, uh, what we had to do was we had to add a bunch of different upgrades to try to emulate the desert where we had to put in uh, humidity upgrades and such uh, to basically make all of the, the the bees in here think that they were in a desert um, but in some cases it still wasn't going to be too successful um, because they wouldn't give you the certain drops that they needed so what this does is it's it's uh, basically just one upgrade that says hey you're in a desert now or you're in a plains or you're in a jungle uh, and of course, they do come with that 20% increase to your energy consumption, so use them wisely, of course. Um, but thankfully, you just need the one, so it's a little bit helpful uh, when you're trying to breed certain breeds of bees. Uh, the last upgrade here is the genetic stabilizer upgrade, and this decreases genetic decay. What this does is it basically makes it so that ignoble stock doesn't die out. Uh, if you've done any bee breeding since uh, Forestry Update a while back, you know that ignoble stock bees eventually will die out if you breed them enough times, essentially. Uh, and then you'll lose your princess and that's it. Uh, this basically prevents that from happening and it's really important with the new machines that have been added. So these guys, of course, they're just uh, not too hard to make. Same way as you make the other ones, uh, you're going to need an upgrade frame for this one in particular. You're going to need three redstone and a GenX processor. For the other ones, uh, you're going to need an environmental processor. This is a new item. This is made with a golden chipset, or you can use an assembly table. But you will need you will need a you will need a golden chipset. At least that's what I have for my config set right now. Uh, but it's probably a different recipe if you don't have build craft on. I would imagine. Uh, otherwise, you know, lapis, diamond, so a little bit a little bit on the expensive side, and then some vines and some other materials, some bronze gears, climate control module some more bronze. Lots of these things do require a lot of bronze. And then again, it's pretty much the same thing for uh, the other other guys here. Some grass blocks. So you'll need silk touch to get these. And the desert, which needs sand. So pretty much the same recipe. And yeah, the other thing that's been changed with the industrial apiary is they can now be controlled by a redstone signal. So you can turn them off and on using redstone. So like a lever hooked up to it. Next we have uh, we'll talk about this in a second. Um, the Scoopinator MX200 Turbo, <laughs> which is uh, fully charged right now. I've got it at 500 charges. Uh, if I change my game mode over, we can see what this thing does. It is basically a scoop, but it uses energy. So if we use this, we can scoop up some bees. Of course, as fun as that is, and I don't want all these guys in my inventory, so we'll just leave them there. Even to die. <laughs> Poor Meadows Bees. Um, and yeah, it's got 500 uses. So you can see that it's went down three charges. And you can charge it in quite a few things. Um, 
the scoop can be charged in an energetic infuser from thermal expansion. So we put it in here, it charges, goes back up to 500 uses. And yeah, it takes about 100 redstone flux per, per use, so not too bad. Uh, I've got my power going from the creative energy cell, just coming down here. It's powering all of these machines. Those are all the machines we talked about last time. Of course, the industrial apiary, the mutatron, the mutagen producer, the advanced mutatron, genetic sampler, and the genetic imprinter. If you have any questions about these, you can once again refer to my previous mod spotlight. I don't think anything has changed, so you're good to go there. Uh, and yeah, we're talking about these new four machines. These are the the focus of the new version, so we'll get right into them. Uh, this first machine is the protein liquefier. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward machine. We can check this guy out in here. The protein liquefier is made with basic crafting components, some bronze gears, hoppers, minecarts, a sturdy casing from forestry, power module, which again requires somewhat similar recipe actually. Almost, almost exactly the same recipe, except it switches the golden. Um, so, what you do with this guy is you put in some sort of meat. There's quite a few different options you have here, and it will use redstone. Um, I think, yeah, so it's it's 20,000 Minecraft jewels or 200,000 redstone flux per use, and it turns it into liquid protein. Uh, the liquid protein, you know, you get di varying amounts uh, depending on what you put in here. It's going to require the same amount of redstone flux. So if you want to get the maximum amount, I would recommend using raw pork chops. Uh, they give you 500 millibuckets or basically half a bucket. Uh, unless you have MFR on, Mine Factory Reloaded, then you can go ahead and send it some raw meat blocks and you can get 4,500 millibuckets. So almost five buckets, which is exactly how much you're going to need. And then uh, you will get some more from how much do you get from raw beef raw beef oh maybe you should use raw beef never mind uh, this gives you 45 400 or 450 millibuckets not too bad so yeah there's a couple of different options again if you have mine factory reloaded you can use some of those items to get the meat out of it or to get the protein out of it and once you do that uh, it will be pumped or you can pull it out using however you want I'm using thermal expansion fluidux for this uh, you can pump it out and you can put it into your genetic replicator we'll get to that in a minute uh, first though we've got to talk about the DNA extractor uh, the DNA extractor requires uh, 80,000 minecraft jewels per tick or not per tick but per operation and 200,000 redstone flux or 200,000 redstone flux I should say uh, it requires labware these are consumed on average one every 10 runs um, and what it does is it basically creates liquid DNA. If that sounds familiar, that's because the Advanced Genetics mod is the mod that added liquid DNA, and it is, in fact, the same liquid DNA that that mod uses. They are interchangeable. So you can use this to produce your liquid DNA if you want for that mod, or you can use that mod's liquid DNA for this one's. They're, again, interchangeable as far as I know. And the next, the basically... What you're going to do with this is you just put in a bee, it's going to turn it into that liquid DNA. So if we grab some bees out of here, this is pretty straightforward. We can simply turn them right into, we want to put 10 in here actually, uh, that liquid DNA. So this is going to get automatically out, outputted thanks to these fluid ducts, and it's going to go into the genetic replicator. While it's doing its thing, uh, we're also going to queue up some of these guys we're going to need. I believe it's 10. I believe it's 10. Let me change the time of day. Uh, we're going to need so much uh, uh, stuff in here. So I'm just queuing that up right now. Yeah, it is 10. Okay. Yep. Uh, and let's look at the raft crafting recipe for this. It probably won't be too much different. Yeah, again, just make a bunch of bronze gears when you want to make these things because you will need a lot of them. And then uh, the genetics processors. It's going to require some buildcraft stuff if you have it on, and sturdy casing, hopper, power module, all that fun stuff. Nothing too surprising there. Uh, you can see that these two machines are running. They are outputting the protein and the liquid DNA. Uh, protein's running a lot faster. It takes a little bit more time and energy to get the liquid DNA out, but we will get there eventually. 
and what we'll do is we'll fill this genetic replicator. That's where all of this fluid is going. Uh, the genetic replicator has two tanks in it, one for liquid DNA and one for protein. And it also has power. Uh, what this does is actually pretty interesting, and it solves a problem that you sometimes hear about when you talk about bee breeding, and that is the limited number of queens in the world, or princesses, actually. Uh, for every hive, there's usually one princess. If you don't go exploring, essentially, you won't find any more princesses in your world. You can have an infinite number of drones because you can continuously breed with the princesses, but you can never have more princesses unless you go and quarry out large, large areas or they go explore new biomes. And that can cause problems for servers. Uh, it's not a huge, huge deal, but it is kind of annoying. It does stop some people from getting maybe everything they want as easily as they want uh, without having to render huge chunks of land. And that causes lag on servers again, and nobody wants that. So this, this seeks to kind of solve that tedium. And, you know, like most of the stuff in this mod, it is aimed at solving tedium. What the genetic replicator does, it allows you to create princesses. Plain and simple. It creates princesses. So, what kind of princesses does it create, and how does it make them? Uh, this machine takes about 250,000 Minecraft jewels, or 2.5 million redstone flux per operation. It actually stores about 5 million redstone flux. And all it takes is about a bucket of liquid DNA, 5 buckets of protein, and a filled template, genetic template. Uh, we talked about templates before in the last one. Uh, these are made using the genetic uh, sampler. Uh, what you do is you put in a bee in here and you will get out a sample of that bee's trait. Uh, and I'm tempted to grab one and just run the process one time. Again, just to refresh your memory. So we just run this process and we'll get out a uh, a sample of this beast, one of this beast traits, a random trait from it. So we have the flower sample, the flower trait. Uh, so it flowers with flowers, as you might expect. Uh, so what this will do is if we have uh, a genetic template, we can fill this genetic template with samples and create a full sample. And I'll show you how you do that. Um, basically, it's just a crafting recipe. So if we put one of these blank samples in here, we can create a sample. And you can see it says one of 13 chromosomes, species diamond. So this is the diamond sample that gives it the diamond species. If I pull this out, uh, you'll see the, the blank gene sample gets pulled out as well. And it now has one of those. And I can stick on another chromosome. And now it has the flower sample. Again, we pull out the gene sample. And now it's got two of 13 chromosomes. But you can see that line is red. Let's go back and we'll grab this. Let's go back and look at the other sample. It's actually green here, 13 of 13. That means it's, a com means it's a complete template. And what we can do with this is we can use it to create an entirely new organism. So if we put this sample in here, it will begin to run its process. It'll take up a ton of energy, although it doesn't take too long. And it will create us a new bee with all of these traits that I've already added to one of these templates already. So uh, it'll be a diamond species with fastest speed, lifespan of longest, fertility of two, all of those different things uh, when it gets done. And there it is. There is my queen, and it's got all of that information. It's a diamond queen. Excellent. Now, you can notice that it's ignoble stock. This means that it will die over a certain period of time. But again, we have that new upgrade that prevents them from dying. So this is really, really good. This is a great way to create more queens. This means that every time you get, when you're bee breeding, every time you get to a purebred bee and you make enough drones to sample that bee and then you can create a template for it, you can simply produce that queen. You don't have to breed, uh, you don't have to breed a rocky princess up to it. Um, before you could do that with the genetic imprinter, where you could take that sample and you could put it in here and you could take a princess, put it in here, and then it would that princess would take on the traits that were in the sample. Um, what this does is it basically takes that second princess out of the equation. Uh, now you don't need an extra, there we go, an extra princess. 
you just need the the liquid DNA and the protein. So cool. Yeah, so we don't have to go out and farm tons and tons and tons of rocky princesses if you don't want to. And if you want to have a seriously large amount of princesses in your world, this is the way to get them right here. This will get you them. Pretty cool. The last machine we'll talk about is the genetic transposer. Uh, this machine, we'll go ahead and look at the recipe for it. Um, nothing too fancy there. And what it does is it basically copies a genetic template or a sample. You can see it's either or. I'll pull this out. Uh, it's either you can either put in a blank sample or or a blank template, and then a filled template or partially filled template, and a filled sample, and some labware. It consumes labware I think one in one in five times, and it will copy that. So if we go in here and we put our labware here, you want to put your your completed one here, and then put your empty one down here. Uh, it will run its process. It takes about 20,000 MJs or 200,000 redstone flux and it creates the same one. So I have a valuable with a fertility one and this is a valuable with a fertility one. Pretty easy. Uh, just a convenience item really. And that's about it. So these new machines um, they fix that problem where you have you know, a limited number of princesses in your world. Now you can create princesses which is really really cool. And overall, I think this mod continues to become more and more complete. It's really nice, really compact. It's got some great documentation. I'm really happy that this mod exists. And definitely kudos to the mod creator. He's done a really, really good job. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, whichever. Try to explain them the best I can. And hopefully we'll be doing more Genesis in the future. Thank you for watching, and until next time then.